the spirit of openness. <laughs> I was uh, I was fairly sceptical about nuclear energy when I first started looking at it about uh, a year or so ago. Uh, to the point of actually being fairly, uh, not anti-nuclear, but thinking, well, it can't be the actual solution. There must be options out there. Even the word nuclear has all these connotations of uh, fearfulness and destruction and, and all these kind of horrific things. And so by having the word nuclear and energy, it's, uh, it brings to nuclear energy all these other connotations that are inherently negative. And as a, a year ago, as a less informed self, I guess some of that uh, weight of uh, the word nuclear kind of bleeds out over everything you think about, especially when you look at nuclear energy. <laughs> they are, they are oh. nuclear themed. Oh, Very good. Very good. good. It's a bit like when you're on a plane, he's got the toxic dips. <laughs> Very good. So all foodstuffs are entirely safe <laughs> if uh, if nuclear themed. Oh, I like. Are they macaroons? They are with toxic fillings. Nice. Nice. <laughs> it's like a You could rate the catering at the end. I think nuclear energy offers a real solution, and I also think it's a real green solution too. And nuclear is the only low carbon uh, energy source that would allow us to meet our mission targets. Sorry, okay. guys, pause you. We'll start handing out the um, next round of information. This Thank is you. pamphlet B. Um, the information here relates to the talk that Oliver is about to give. Um, Generally, uh, the people we've talked to, uh, words synonymous with nuclear have been like bombs and toxicity and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, hopefully within the next 10 years or so, more people will think of just clean energy and carbon free energy when they hear nuclear. Actually, in terms of, um, in, in this case, storage, um, kind of just scares people and they don't know what to make of it. So, my proposal was look at how you might balance those risks, how you can say, well, okay, if you are worried about a nuclear waste burden, then how can you go about engineering a solution that would be suitable for that? I want to ask, what would it take to convince you that nuclear is a good, viable solution to our energy needs? And science has somehow failed over the last 60 years to convince the wider public that nuclear is that desirable solution. The Department of Energy and Climate Change, who are basically in charge of uh, new nuclear in the UK, um, their role or their methods are to incentivise the uptake of nuclear. But it might be that that's not enough to allay the, the fears and concerns that people might have. Science has a role to play um, in balancing that argument. But how do you deal with the arguments that are relatively irrational or unscientifically founded? What would it take to convince people? Is it about incentivising? Is it about dealing with the perceived hazards? And this booklet of proposals is essentially some exemplars from those solutions. One of the kind of irrational fears or um, unscientifically proven, unfounded ideas about nuclear is that there could be some kind of catastrophic incident that would release radiation into the atmosphere. Well, how would you guard against that? And how would you engineer a solution that could solve that? The proposal that I'm talking about is basically a protective barrels cloud, a large scale cloud hovering over the station, tethered and in case of incident, could simply be dispersed and radioactive particles would simply be dissipated into space. So this may well, quite simply, sit over the top of that. But does 
the idea of something like that seem crazy to you two? Yeah. It yeah, does. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's a good idea having the containment. We do have that containment. Uh, but instead of putting it over the whole reactor, you put it over the bits where something dangerous could leak out. But right. this is meant to comfort people. Yeah. It's definitely a difference between the science, the facts that I know, and what the public uh, think have been yeah. told in the past. And you, ha you do have to approach both the problems differently. I get into those ideas where people just simply won't believe you or won't trust you in the, the kind of measures that you go to. Mm. Uh, right, there we go. <laughs> That's about right, I think. <laughs> like that? Yeah, Good. just to so indicate that yeah. it's safe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the prospect of this cloud and stuff like that, it's, it's not really feasible on that kind of scale, but it's back to the idea. Is a spoonful of ice cream enough? Yeah. I imagine not for most people. <laughs> How many spoonfuls of ice cream do you have to get to before it's that tipping point? Yeah. Instead of mitigating these perceived hazards, what if we accepted a nuclear sweetener and opened the door to boundless energy benefits? If we were to take this to its logical conclusion, then we could use this energy to remake polar ice caps. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, bring it on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the very unique possibilities that are created as a result of nuclear energy. It's an offer that is only open as a result of nuclear energy in order to use that amount of energy to produce ice, snow, etc. in Essex, in this situation, in the UK. So I'm going to talk next about, I guess, one of the other main uh, arguments against nuclear energy, and that's um, <laughs> nuclear waste. What to do with this huge burden? So we're going to take a little walk through the village, round to the village hall. One teacup is one person's nuclear waste for a whole lifetime of nuclear electricity. Now, at the moment, the strategies for nuclear waste are to build a big hole and put all the nuclear waste in it for as long as possible, so that it never gets touched. If benefits were offered for accepting responsibility of the waste, then this could be turned to advantage. It becomes a huge asset. Well, how much is this worth? It, could, it's, it seems to me to be an investment opportunity. You have carbon rationing, but why wouldn't it be possible to ration nuclear waste to the point where you have your personal allowance? This is not something on offer at any point. <laughs> Currently. Currently. Yeah. I mean, to me, that actually off, puts me off, because that seems like a lot per person to me, that we don't know what to do with. Yeah, it's sort of kind of... Coal, that's nothing. No, but I'm just, I'm just saying, in a way, something you don't know how to deal with, no matter how small. The point would be There's a level of irresponsibility you, attached you to it that you can't thing. get round. Well, but you could argue that we're in the mess we're in now, because people didn't forward plan with our current energy. Climate change is happening because we didn't plan for our CO2 releases and our gold coal power. Exactly, which is kind of what we're saying here. We don't know what we can do it's with this. It's true, so but at least like now we've had the site to keep it in a form where it sits still solid or it's liquid. Yeah, we, we it sits on the ground it. and we've still got it, whereas CO2 has gone, it's done its damage. How do you have safe energy now and safe energy in the future yeah. rather than going well it's we just want it all now, we want all now. <laughs> what is the real alternative and given that there's warnings about energy shortages how do we kind of plug the energy gap the shaping and convincing of that argument how you might design that argument for nuclear 
is more complex than just the scientific one or the economic one or uh, it's actually more subjective and nuanced with people's uh, weirdnesses about it.